don't take a practice test that is like not timed at all you are lying to yourself because the real exam guess what it is timed <laughs> hey guys welcome back to my channel happy new year if you're new here hello and welcome my name is grace patrice and i make pre-med content on how to help medical student how to help pre-medical students get into medical school if you're an old returning subscriber hello thank you for sticking with me um, we are almost at one year of being on youtube and it's all thanks to you guys so if you've seen the video title um this video is primarily geared towards how to study for the mcat so i am a two-time mcat test taker <laughs> The first time I took the MCAT, I got a 503 and the second time I took the MCAT, I got a 509 and in this video, I'm going to be sharing the strategies I used. Okay, so now let's get into the tips. Um, first thing, take a diagnostic test and take it cold. I know so many times it's so daunting when you're like taking a diagnostics, like I don't know anything. Like I took physics two years ago, like what do I even remember? And it's so tempting to like brush up on your amino acids or, you know, brush up on your brush up on your amino acids, brush up on your physics equations, but trust me, go into the exam code. The th what is, it's going to help you figure out what you're naturally good at and what you're naturally not good at. So when I took my diagnostic um, exam, the second time I was preparing to write for the MCAT, I noticed that I was naturally good at biology and, and psych social and my cars and my physics chemistry section was really struggling. So right off the back, I knew that I needed to really, really hone in into the physics chem section as well as the car section so definitely take a diagnostic test code it's going to save you a lot of time in the end number two dig into practice questions very very early on when you're starting first week start doing questions and i know there's just um the the conventional method of studying for the MCAT is like okay I'm gonna read all the books make all my notes and once I'm done I'm gonna dig into questions and it's like once you're done doing all of that you have two weeks to your test date and you literally start freaking out that was me the first time I took the exam I kept on pushing practice tests back and back because I was like oh I'm not done studying glycolysis oh I'm not done studying the female reproductive system it's like I just kept on pushing it back and pushing it back and if you've watched my video how to get straight A you know how much I hammer do questions you really want to test yourself and know how much you know so this was what I did this was a strategy my brother taught me hi Nina I thank you for this strategy this was what my brother taught me he said dig into questions early and when you start doing the questions it's not like you're randomly doing it. it's like okay I got it wrong okay this is the answer and like move on no you want to keep track of the concepts you're getting wrong now that is very crucial so when I was practicing the two reasons resources I used which I highly recommend is the entire bundle of um, the entire bundle of practice questions that the AMC sells the AMC um, I looked online and it currently retails for $268.80 for a year of access honestly I was privileged enough not to pay this I used the FAP to fund my entire medical school application which I'm going to be talking about in a whole different um, video but the thing I actually paid out of pocket for was UWorld access to UWorld for six months and that cost me $270 so for every day I would take um, questions and because I knew my physics social section was really struggling that's how I'll start off the day I would always start off the day with like 20 questions in that section now here is the kicker and here is the key you need to keep track of the concepts you're getting wrong so for this is just an example for example I'll do like a physics question and I'll get it wrong and in the answer stream it will tell me that the equation I needed to get it right was v equals um, v equals um, v <laughs> since forgot v equals u plus a t okay so how do you keep track of the concepts you're getting wrong what i did was to make flashcards so i love to use anki i've been using anki since my master's program at brown you can use anki you can use quizlet um i would recommend anki or quizlet whichever one works best for you so a quick one um i would 
solve a physics question and I'll get it wrong. And in the answer stem, they will tell me that you are supposed to use this equation V equals U plus AT. But it's very, it's very, very easy to just like take a screenshot of that question and the answer and just like boom. And you think you've learned it, but you actually haven't. So from one question, I would make like five different flashcard testing me on that concept so i'm like okay your kinematics is very poor so instead of just learning one equation like v equals u plus at i would learn all the equations related to that just in case the next time the question is like flip in a different way i can know what equation to use so that was how i studied for the mcat for physics for i did the same thing for physics for chemistry for biochemistry all of that i would always I would solve the question if i got it right praise jesus i know it some way somehow i would just keep on moving if i got it wrong it means i did not know the concept and honestly i started off with like two out of two <laughs> And honestly, it can be sad because you're going into this thing cold and you don't, you might not even remember much. And I will start with like two out of 20 and gradually I'll see it move from like two out of 20 to like seven out of 20, 10 out of 20. And they like, it got to a point I was getting 18 out of 20 and that's when you know you're doing well. Now here is the secret sauce to this method. You need to go over your concepts every night. And what I mean by that is that you need to go over your flashcards every night to really make sure that you're drumming in those concepts into your head. So every day after I was done studying, um, I would go through my flashcards, go through my biochem flashcards, go through my biology flashcards. So if I got a question of menstruation wrong, it wasn't enough for me to just make a flashcard of like, oh like which you know is it um estrogen or progesterone at this time of the month and just put in the answer no i'll actually go back and go study the entire menstruation and make flashcards of that just to keep the concepts really hammered in in my brain and i'll go over the flashcards every night so for six weeks by the end I by the end of my study period i think i had between 300 to 400 flashcards but um especially anki makes it easy because you keep going over these cards every every day and then sometimes Anki's like, okay, you know this, I'm not gonna show it to you for the next two days. I'll bring it back like five days later, seven days later. It's called space repetition. And that really, really helped me. So that was what I mainly used for my biochem section, my biology section, my physics and chem section. This technique works. It really does it really does so please i would highly encourage you if you're looking for like a new study method that is what i would recommend for cars i got a 125 on cars and honestly that was me saying thank you jesus hallelujah praise the lord um i don't have much help for when it comes to cars aside from like if there's a resource you absolutely absolutely need to use it's going to be hands down the one provided by the aamc um car, i don't recommend Kaplan and prince thing when it comes to cars because i'm just like the amc they write the test so do do those and i think you'd be fine um unfortunately i can't help you much in cars because i got it 125 so i think i'm gonna link a couple of videos in the description box that can you know help you if you're like i'm really really struggling in cars and i want to do better for the psych social um, section this was a section that by the grace of god I got the 98th percentile. I got a 130. And what I did for the psych section was that same thing. Question, you get it wrong, you make a flashcard of the concepts, go over it every night. But especially for psych social, I would still make a flashcard even if I got it right. Because sometimes you got it right, so they're, they're gonna give you A, B, C, D. And you get it right, but you don't know A. So it's like, maybe you got the answer right, but it's like, oh wait, I don't know bystander effect. Or I don't know the third, uh, I don't know C, I don't know D. So for psych for me, it was pure memorization. Even if I got the question right, I would still study what those other options meant because it's like, you're gonna see it in another question somewhere, somehow. And that was how I studied for the MCAT. In addition to that, I took a practice test every week. So I think for my first two weeks of studying was just like, mainly questions after my doc diagnostic and for the last four weeks i would take a practice test literally like every week every saturday i would wake up straight go take my um, go take my practice test and be done for the day that's it i take my practice test and please when you're taking the practice test this is actually very good um thank you holy spirit for the reminder please 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 take it time
don't take a practice test that is like not timed at all you are lying to yourself because the real exam guess what it is timed so please take your practice test timed in the exact conditions don't overtake your breaks don't like pause your exam oh i got so nervous and you pause it no take it like you would take the MCAT. I almost forgot. I don't know if I mentioned it earlier, but I went through the entire AAMC practice bundle questions twice. So in total, including the practice test and everything, I think it's comprised of um, 2,300 questions. I went, I run through those questions twice. I know it sounds crazy. So I, in total, I probably did like um, 2,300 plus 2,300 is or 600 questions, but I basically repeated the question. And this is very crucial because the first time you go through those questions, they're gonna help you identify your weaknesses and your strengths. And based off of that, you can, you know, um, you know the concepts you're good at, you know the concepts you're not good at. Now, the second time you take those again, yeah, I retook my practice test, everything. Yeah, it was crazy. The second time you do that, you're really familiarizing yourselves with the way the AMC writes an exam and the way the AMC thinks. You should be able to get to a point where you're reading a biology question and you can anticipate what they're gonna ask you. Like, you know, they're like, oh, you know, the amino acid, like two amino acids came here and it went into like a protease, blah, blah, blah. You should be able to anticipate that this is ubiquitination, that kind of thing. And I think that's what running through the question pack twice helped me with. It helped me be able to just be comfortable with like the way the AMC set stuff. Um, and it also helped me to be able to like anticipate questions and that was how I mainly studied for the MCAT. I hope you found this video helpful. I hope you found it enjoyable. I get this question so many times. So I really hope I was able to, you know, bring some light, bring some hope, bring some new strategy that you haven't tried. And um, it's like, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to study for the exam. Try this method and with God on your side, you are gonna be able to, you know, crash that MCAT like a boss. You following me? You following me? <laughs> Okay guys, that's all I have for you for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to share it. Don't forget to like it. Don't forget to ask your questions in the comment section below and I'll be more than happy to answer them. Thank you guys and have a wonderful day. Once again, happy new year. <laughs> I was gonna say happy holidays, but I'm like, ma'am, the holidays are over. Happy, happy new year, and I hope you enjoy your 2022. Jesus loves you. Bye.